Who are you? It might be good to pause before you answer this. Let us consider a few possible answers. We could say that you are an ambulatory sensorium. But what is that? Ambulatory is something that walks, and a sensorium is the capacity for a sensory apparatus to process, conceive and construct its world through its sense organs. All information regarding the physical world is brought to you through your senses. Have you ever considered this definition of yourself? Who are you? Are you an economic animal? As many corporations, governments and institutions might make you think. In this definition, the purpose of life revolves around money, markets, commodities and buying and selling. From this economic Darwinian perspective, the human is the highest form of animal that has evolved. This definition is reinforced by the mass media, that tells us our purpose is to buy, sell, trade, consume and produce goods to increase our wealth and satisfy material sensory creature comforts. Is this who you are? Have you ever thought of yourself as a biochemical processing system? In this definition, we see the human lives within a particular environment governed by certain laws that control the circulation of various elements of energies, atmospheres, minerals, sunlight, radiation, etc. In this description, the function of the human is to metabolize and process complex chemicals and photons, or different kinds of information and energy, contributing to a whole order of the biosphere. Is this who you are? Or are you merely an ego clad in a bag of bones? This may not be a flattering description, but most people operate to one degree or another by a fundamental premise of this particular stage of evolution. They think, what's in it for me? Or, if I don't get something out of this, then why should I do it? Many people feel it is common sense to think this way and it is common sense from a materialist point of view. The ego is always thinking about getting its piece of the pie. This type of thinking produces a being that clamors for attention and tries to get noticed. This can be witnessed particularly in the cybersphere, where the body sits in front of a computer, blogging or surfing the internet, while the mind becomes absorbed in virtual reality. In this instance, is the body not just a bag of bones? Who is talking? Who is thinking? Who is running the mechanism? Is it merely a set of conditioned reflexes? A robotic automaton with fixed responses? Are you more than your digestive tract? Are you more than what happens in your larynx when you talk? Who are you anyway? Once again, you have been brought to this text. Who is reading? Who is considering what is being read? Who is thinking there might be something else? Do you feel the intangible part of yourself as you read these words? Do you feel the subtle levels of your soul? When you reach this level of self-reflective questioning, then you have already entered the labyrinth and there is no turning back. The labyrinth is comprised of the questions that you ask about yourself, about your society, about your environment, about your planet and about your universe. Are the answers you receive mirror projections of something you are putting out? Or do your answers have deeper meaning that penetrate your conditioned responses? Asking who am I is the first stage of entering the labyrinth. Each question answered takes you down another corridor and opens another door. Proceeding to the second door, there is a question that reads.